Hello, hello, and welcome to The Connecting Point, a discussion table for creators to connect, inspire, share ideas, and transform the world through raw, unedited talk. I am Dr. Marcy Thurman Simmons, and I am here today so happy to see my little Marley Pooh on the other end of this camera. Yes, her name is Marley Taylor, and she is one of the brightest, most talented little people. Well, she's not little anymore. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> when I first met her, she was little, which... um leads me marley i have to tell i have to tell the connecting point at each one of these yes. discussion mm -hmm. tables mm -hmm. so yes. everyone this is marley poo yes <laughs> <laughs> hi i said marley taylor and the connecting point here is i think when marley was were you four years old when i met you four i was uh okay. four um marley was four years old when I met her. Um, she started taking piano from me first, didn't you? I think it was piano. Yes, ma'am. She started taking yes, piano. piano lessons from me to begin with, which then went over into voice instruction. Okay, so yep. I've been knowing her since the age of four. And of course, her mother, I love her mother dearly. Her mother's a dear, 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 dear friend of <laughs> mine and my family. And so Marley is a part of our family. So, you know, that's the connecting point here. Now, yes. Marley, will you tell the audience, well, you already know who you are, but what your area of creativity is, where you're from, where you live now, and your age. My age. So, I'm Marley, Marley Taylor. Um, I'm 13 years old. Um, I live in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Atlanta, and um, I'm an actress and dancer, and I sing. Mm -hmm. That's where I hang out at in my creativity, singing, dancing, and acting. And, um, yeah. <laughs> that's, who, that's who she is. Was, yeah. She does all of those little neat things. And Marley is um, such a joy to be around. If you ever know, got to know her, she's so enthusiastic. She is a typical teenager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you that she's a typical teenager. But what I loved most about you, Marley, was you were always somewhere creating. Even when, yeah. you, were, when you were small, I remember you sitting at my kitchen table. I don't know how old you were then, but you created this I whole about monologue. Six. About mm -hmm. six? You created this whole monologue about hot, hot sauce. You remember that? <laughs> it was something about your uncle. And wow. <laughs> Hot sauce. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. That's crazy. I forgot about that. Yeah, I sat there. I said, what is this little girl doing? She's talking about hot sauce. A whole mon monologue about hot sauce. And so this is the kind of person Marley is, but yeah. she is fast developing into a young lady of which I am so, so very proud of. Now, Marley. Could you tell the audience a little bit about how, what area you really love to be in? I know you just named three different areas, but where is that area that you just, uh, hands down, find yourself in, even when you're not thinking about it? I feel like that would be singing, really, because like I sing all the time, all day, like I'll be sitting down, it'll be quiet and I'll just start making beats with my hands and just singing. I feel like that's where like I am the most like with singing, like that's where I hang out at. You, you, you really love singing. Yeah, I love singing. If you're comfortable, Marley, you can sing something on here, acapella. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, she Thanks. can't do it. You can sing, sing something, Marley. They, I'm sure they'll want to hear you. What song was that you used to do all the time? I think you you did um, that, um, my Teacher of the Year program. Do you remember? What song was that? You you did it at something. Um, was it Stevie Wonder? Something about Stevie uh, I don't think so. I, I, I have a song, actually, that I can sing. Okay, go ahead. We'll start this off with some creativity off the rip. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let, me Let me see. Could it be I stayed away too long? Did I leave your mind when I was gone? It's not my thing trying to get back. But the time let me tell you where I'm at. You don't have to worry because I'm coming. Back to where I have always should have stayed. And now I've heard the maybe to your story. And it's enough love for me to stay. I want to be where you are. Oh, any way you are. Oh, I want to be where you are. Oh, any way you are. Oh. Yes, aha, uh -huh. that's Michael <laughs> Jackson, honey. <laughs> so audience, you see what I'm talking about. She is just full of all of this creativity. Now, Marley, of course, this is a discussion table for young creators, okay? And so I want to talk about how you discovered what you really want to do. How did you know acting and singing and all of that was what you wanted to do. What indicated that to you? Well, when I was really young, I would say three and a half. Like I would watch a lot of old TV shows, like Different World. I would watch Moesha, just a lot of old shows. I would listen to old music and that's what I was brought up around. And when I watch these old TV shows, I would memorize the scenes mm -hmm. from these old TV shows and I wouldn't even be thinking about it and not know it. And my mom picked it up in me and she was like, you know, she can memorize this. Like, and she asked me that I want to act. And I was like, you know, yeah. Cause I think that at that young age, I thought that I'm like, you know, I can do something with this. If I can memorize it off of TV, I can really take this somewhere. And what I love about your mom, she has always yeah. supported whatever you wanted yeah. to do in the arts and in your creativity, um, yeah. which, you know, is a part of her too, but <laughs> we won't go into that. But she's always supported that. And that's the wonderful thing um, about you having that awesome support from your mother, your grandparents. You have a wonderful family that supports you in all of that. Now, how was it growing up though, uh, with your friends around? Did you ever sing around your friends and they look at you like, oh, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would usually sing around, I, I think I've sung around all of my friends. My best friend is the one that like, she hears me sing all the time. Like when she comes over to my house, I'm always singing. And like, we really like, and my best friend, she can't sing, but she, <laughs> we, but we had like, we had really fun, like singing songs with each other. And like my friends, I don't think they ever looked at me weird when I sing because they would just let me be in my natural element. So they didn't really. So you have good friends yeah. because good yeah. friends will let you be who you are in yeah. your creativity. So I think that is very important that you have a group of friends that will let you do that. I, I, I'm here thinking now about you and Mahogany. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and how you all just talk, 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 and the areas that you went over into uh, for your creativity. And it's just amazing to see you grow up into this beautiful, bright, young lady. Now, Marley. <laughs> You haven't told everything about you yet because I'm trying to hold on to it a little bit. But 
I also <laughs> like to talk about the imagination and how important that is in the creative process. So how do you use your imagination when you're creating? Um, well, when I am with scripts and with auditions, when I have scripts and I look at the script and I think to myself, I'm like, okay, what would you do in this situation? How would you react in this situation? And I just take myself to that place and I display it on camera. Mm -hmm. And I just really just put myself there, right there in that script and in that scene. And I'm like, okay, you have to act as if this is happening to you in this moment. So that's where I really can, that's how I really connect with my scripts because I relate to them. And that's important. That's important. And I'm glad you mentioned this magic word audition. Because a lot of young people who are in the arts industry or desire to be in it, they're not quite sure how that audition process goes. Can you kind of talk a little bit about the pros and cons the good things yeah. and the things that are not so good about an audition if you're going for a professional sure. audition when you go for in-person auditions you one thing that you have to like pay attention to the people who are watching you audition they are not like even if you do good they are not gonna like react how you think they are going to react like if you can do a great job and they'll just sit there yeah. just stare at you and they won't make any certain facial expressions so with that you can't for when if there is somebody if you're going into acting you can't take that to heart because that is just how certain people the industry is yeah the industry is that's just how the industry is like even with singing you can't expect people to always be like wow they may think that and you know you may do a great job and they may say they may say that in their head but you can't always take that you can't take that to heart when you see that happening in per yeah you can't take that personally you know i've always tried to tell my students that um saying listen when you're auditioning even if it's in front of me hmm. and your classmates we're not gonna smile you're not gonna get a hand clap and you're gonna have to be all right with that. Yeah. But it's, it's really hard for people who are used to getting some type of feedback because most of the time when you are a performer or you know acting or whatever, you're doing it in front of your family. And your family yeah. members are always the ones, well, yeah. I won't say always, most <laughs> of the time, they're the ones who are encouraging you. So when you go into these other arenas where you have to stand in front of total strangers, yeah. And it's not a smile. It's not a hand clap. It becomes <clears throat> heartbreaking sometimes. Were you heartbreaking, broken the first time you went to one? Um, I don't, I wouldn't say necessarily heartbroken, but I think that I was just in shock. I'm like, hmm, like, why didn't they smile? Like, I know I did good. Like, you know, like, what's the, what, what, but like, what's, what, what probably, happened? What did I do wrong? You're probably wondering, did they like it or not? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that is a part of it. Now, can you talk a little yeah. bit too about preparing for a role? How do you even go, go about doing that? And the work that's involved, because I think some people think they can just do it and, Mm -mm. There's, no There's a lot that, you know, you, when I get scripts, I usually, I study over my script and I go over with my mom or I'll go over it by myself in the mirror and I'll just look over it and I'll say my lines and I'll memorize them and then I worry about facial expression, but you can't. When you get a script, you can't just always just say the lines. You really have to connect with those lines. Mm -hmm. And and when I mean connect, you got to connect with 
your your face. You gotta connect with the inflection of your voice. Yes. So yes. it's a lot that comes with a script. You can't just say it. You have to feel it also. You have to feel it also. And that that's very important when you're preparing for an audition or for any type of uh, yeah. performance. You know, it it requires yeah. preparation. Not waiting for the last minute to do yeah. something. Now, Marley, I want you to explain to the audience, audience, mm -hmm. how did you balance school and acting? How, how were you able to do that successfully? So, <laughs> I hope the audience is ready for this. So, when <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was in third grade when I got, um, the role of D in Almost Christmas. Mm -hmm. I was going to public school yeah. and I had just, yeah, I had just gotten public school and before, but before that I had been homeschooled and I went to public school for one year, third grade. But after I got that role, my mom had to take me out of public school That's because cool. they were, I was missing too many days and I would have flunked if I would have stayed in there so I had to go back to homeschool. Mm -hmm. So I've been really, I've been mostly homeschooled all my life and I've only been to public school or a different type of school. And it's only been like, public school was like two months and then, no, three months and then I got the role. Mm -hmm. Other school, like, you know, I went there for about a year, but homeschool is really where I really, was at with mm -hmm. acting that's how I was I've been able to balance it so well because homeschool and so when you're, when you're in school are you able to do your lessons at your own pace or are you still on a schedule so I was on a scheduled homeschool it was a public homeschool mm -hmm. but my mom took me out of um that homeschool and now she homeschools me and I can do certain activities, certain crafts. I can pick what I want to do for the day. And I like that better because, you know, I can schedule my own, you know, day and what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wanted the audience to hear that because sometimes a sacrifice has to be, well, most times, all, I'm going to say all the time, a sacrifice has to be made somewhere for you to be mm -hmm. successful as a performing artist. And that yeah. sacrifice sometimes, most of the time, lies on the parent and the child uh, because your mom has had to make a lot of hard decisions. Mm -hmm when she was trying to juggle, okay, do I want to give Marley what her dream is mm -hmm. and sacrifice school? Or do I want to just say, uh, Marley, you got to just go on through school and just wait on the dream. Your mom was not willing to sacrifice your passion and your mm -hmm. dream. And that is important yes. to, for, for parents to be able to make that type of decision. And so I, you know, I am glad she did it because it made a difference. Now, since you already mentioned you were in the movie Almost Christmas, and guess what? I'm watching that again tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the holiday season. Yes, I am. Yes. Almost Christmas. Now, can you talk a little bit about um, that role and how you felt playing that role in Almost Christmas? I felt amazing, like, because it was my first movie. Mm -hmm. So when I got that, I'm like, okay, I got to work my butt off. Like, I got to, this, I got to be like, do so good on this role. But the role I had, like, I love playing, like, being D on Almost Christmas because we're so much alike in so many ways. So it was just so much fun like on set and everything and being around so many legends in the industry it was i can't even describe how it felt so you actually <laughs> did with the role 
that you yeah. were playing and you found the commonalities between you and the role you were playing and that is also vital when you are acting you become yes. the person did did you have to become her at home marley <laughs> like did you have to come home and act like you were d <laughs> <laughs> nope because i was already i mean i was already like the role so it was just like natural. i can just yeah it was natural for me and who are some of the people you got a chance to meet while you were preparing and actually in the movie of Almost Christmas? I got to meet Monique, who is one of my favorites. And I funny. love the Parkers. Yes, she's <laughs> hilarious. Like, I love the Parkers as, like, my favorite show. And I got to meet Danny Glover, who I love so much as an actor. Um, I got to meet... J.B. Smooth, who is hilarious, but also. You know, JB, <laughs> let me tell you something about him. He went to school in Atlanta. Did, did you know that? Oh, wow. Wait a minute. I think, no, J.B. Smooth is the young guy, right? Am I right? Which one is the young guy that played in that movie, Marley? Um, Jesse. D.C. D.C. Youngfly. Yeah. Okay. He went to high school at Carver. Oh, wow. Where Jamari went to school. Wow. And he, Jamari and said, I used to always, dance. he was always getting in trouble, but that's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's why you never know where people are going to end up. He probably was always getting in trouble for his mouth. And <laughs> yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff. But that was the plight his life was taking. He's a comedian. Yeah. So, you know, you never know where people are going to end up. Yeah. 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 Now, Marley, can you tell the audience the next movie role that you secured? So I was Stevie in the movie Little with Regina Hall and um, Issa Rae mm -hmm. and Marce Martin. Mm -hmm. And shooting that was really, really fun. I had a lot of fun on set with everybody and, you know, the chemistry that me and Marseille had with our scene is just like amazing because when you put two hilarious people mm -hmm. in a room together, it's like you you have to expect fireworks with that. Uh -huh. So I had so much fun, you know, bonding with her and she's so nice. And even Regina Hall, you know, just connecting with her in that scene. It was in certain scenes in the movie was just amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, Marley, I went and selected a clip from the movie Little. Yay. Because, you know, I, I remember when we, we came to the showing of Little, mm -hmm. and I was sitting in that seat thinking, oh, my gosh, this is the cutest thing ever. That's what I was sitting there thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but I and, and this scene was actually one of my favorite from the movie Little. Mm. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to watch that clip from Little that I selected. Now, while I'm doing that, Marley, can you tell a little bit about, do you know why the movie was called Little? Marseille got the idea from the movie Big, and that movie, I, I've never seen it, I've never seen the movie Big, but I know that's where she, I've never seen the movie Big, it's on Disney Plus, but I think, yeah, it is on this, but I know that's where she got the idea from. Okay, I've never oh. seen it either. Well, you remember this scene, Marley? Look at it, do you see it? Can you see my screen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see it. It's okay, so we're going to yes, watch Marley in action, everybody. And hopefully, um, I'm having some connection problems right now, but hopefully it will hold up. Okay, here we go. Being my assistant and try being good at that first. You can't talk to April that way. I'm not the fire hazard in here. She's just making deliveries. I don't see this way. Were you always this way? Was I always what way? Me? No. Actually, I used to be just like you when I was little. And you know what? People treated me like crap. Then what happened? I got big and I got rich. 
So now who's gonna check me, boo? Well, 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 well. Yeah, you ain't ready to play with the grown-ups. So go ahead with your little stuff. I wish you were my age. Then I'd check you. Everybody who you're awful to would check you too, boo. Well, I wish your little cartoon dog would bite you. <laughs> I wish you were little. What was that? What was what? What was that? Get out. Get that little chocolate hogwart out. Okay. So. <laughs> no, you don't look good. No, you don't look good. <laughs> People don't need carbs. They start seeing Satan. <laughs> Yes, I love that scene. Yes, it was so good. How did it feel being able to talk back to an adult? <laughs> oh my gosh, it felt like great. Because <laughs> you're not doing that in the natural born real. <laughs> mm -mm, no. Oh gosh, I love it. Now, Marley, mm. as we've been talking about you and your acting career, Tell me those things that were important to you, the most important things to you when you were preparing, um, such as family support, um, have your diet that you had to have while you were on, you know, acting in that role. What were some things that were of most importance to you? Um. I would say just, you know, having fun while, you know, acting because acting is something that I love to do. And I want to make sure that if this is something I want to do, I, I want to have fun while doing it. So that was really and having fun and memorizing my lines was the I feel like the most important mm -hmm. thing to me when I entered doing these roles. So I think that was like the two important things for me. And as far as like diet, I really like, you know, <laughs> like the, <laughs> the food on set was good. So, I mean, I, I ate well on both of these roles. <laughs> and I, you know, we, Mahogany and I was just talking the other day. I got to spill the beans. Your mama listening. <laughs> uh, I think she is. Look, I don't want you to get in trouble, but I'm going to tell it. <laughs> <laughs> Marley, let, Marley would come to my house and go straight to that snack table. <laughs> yeah. Because Jennifer wouldn't let you eat certain things. Marley would come mm. to my house and go straight to the snack table, the Oreo cookies, and guess what? I let her. <laughs> yep. And I appreciate you for letting me. Because <laughs> Jennifer, now you know Jennifer. I hope she can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that is too funny yes you did you you went to that snack table <laughs> but oh dear those were just good times to even watch you grow up to be who you yes, are now how important is your family in what you're doing oh my gosh it's like having my family like being able to to have had my family like with me during like all my areas of creativeness like having my grandma take me to my dance classes having my aunts take me to my dance classes having my grandma be at my auditions like that meant and still means a lot to me so it was so great growing up and even now having my family around, you know, being at my movie showings when I had my meet and greets and stuff like it meant it means and it meant so much to me. And you know what? And I, I, the reason I ask you that is because I wanted you to say that so other creators can hear it. What is so important, um, a lot of people don't think it is because it seems small if it's something you get all the time, but it is 
really, really important to have support. I know my daughter said to me recently, you don't know what it means, mama, if you just go, when you do things for me that seem small, it meant you were paying attention to me. And, you know, I thought about that. I said, I, you know, what you're saying I did for you is small. And she's like, no, it, it, to me, it's big. Um, it, because it shows that you care about me. And so even if the, even if it's not a family member, but it's someone who's close that shows support, I think that is yeah. a key factor in your success. And I do know and have witnessed your family rallying around you all the time to make sure you are well. And I remember even um, talking to your mom when, when she was getting ready to put you in this industry. And I remember saying to her, you gotta, you gotta be there. Don't let them just have Marley. Where's your mama? I need your mama to come to this camera right now so she can give some inspiration to these parents. Come on, Jennifer. <laughs> oh, my camera prepared. <laughs> oh, honey, this is raw and edited talk, Jennifer. Come on now. <laughs> Jennifer, did you just hear me when I said, you remember when you were getting ready to put Marley into this industry? And mm -hmm. I said, just don't leave my, don't leave Marley by herself. You remember? No. I said, I'm going to be upset with you, Jennifer. If no, you yeah, you, I told you. Yeah, and I told you, you didn't have to tell me that because that was never going to happen. Yes. I've, had people, I've had people say, actually, it's crazy because I've had people actually suggest that, even like friends. Um, and yeah, like, you know, you could just leave Marley oh, and God. they have handlers on set. I, I would never. Mm -mm. She'll no, be grown Jennifer. and I'll still be on set. Thank you, Jennifer. And that's why I wanted you to come on and tell yeah. parents who are listening what this entails when you have a child who is actually in the industry and mm -hmm. what they're going to have to do and sacrifice for their children. Ooh, definitely be be prepared to um, to be flexible and adjust because it has definitely determined what type of jobs I do, mm -hmm. um, where we live. You know, I moved from my hometown, uh, and if need, if need be, if we have to move again for her career, then we have to do it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it, it definitely comes with you know sacrificing stability. Because you just never know. And you really have to really go on faith. That's it. You really have to go on faith. Mm -hmm. So parents, you hear that? I mean, I've said it on yeah. many of these platforms, what it's going to take. But right. you're hearing it from parents who are actually doing it. And Jennifer, you have managed your own daughter. Yeah, I've, I've co-managed with some people. But ultimately, I've taken, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the main one. And right now, it's just me. Yeah, it's and when just you me. Started, so when I say go. When you started, you didn't know what you were doing. I remember you said, "I don't know what to do," but you did it. I had to learn because they don't tell they don't tell the parents anything. They really, I mean, honestly, they're really just ready to use your kids, exploit them. They don't. They don't. They just. They just throw. They just throw you in there. They don't tell the parents much of anything, and you really do have to like ask questions and talk to people and network so that you can learn the ins and outs of the business. And I'm truly grateful for. The, the genuine people in the industry we've connected with, Romani Malco is one, um, JB is one, um, his manager, we talk often and they give a lot of information and um, mm -hmm. some, some great information on how to help me with her and they genuinely care. Mm -hmm. So that's been, um, that's been a blessing for sure. Well, Jennifer, yeah. thank you, because I, you know, I, I want uh, parents to, to hear, because we have parents that listen to these shows um, yeah. and wondering how they're going to maneuver in this industry. Right. And the, the magic word is really not a magic word. The word here is sacrifice. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And, and making sure that it's, um, that you're doing it for them and not for yourself. There you go. Mm -hmm. Not living vicariously through the, through the children. That's a big thing. Cause I've seen parents really be uh, tough and pushing like I'm, I'm tough on Marley because she tells me she wants to do it you know so I'm going to make sure you do it to the best of your ability but I've also seen children who were just not into it and the parents force it on them 
And um, that's a different story, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I tell Marlene the time, you know, if you want to stop, it's your decision. You let me know. And you know? so that's the, I, I've said this before too, Jennifer, the common thread here that I keep hearing across the board is allowing your children to be who they are. Right. In that's what I tell her. Mm -hmm. Before she even got on, I said, all right, be Marley with you, you know, be Marley. <laughs> and she has been. And yeah. And it's yeah. been successful. Yeah. And I'm excited to see just how much further you're going to go. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, me mama, too. I tell you, your mama is going to drive you. <laughs> with that. Yeah. Look, I told Jennifer before we even started this show, I said, I'm scared of your mama, honey. I need to be exercising with you. Je <laughs> I'm getting Come ready to plug in for Jennifer. Jennifer is the health guru. Nah, Jennifer, Jennifer tell, them what you're, tell them what you're doing, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 sell, I sell and promote detox products. Mm -hmm and health and wellness. So fitness, health and wellness. I'm getting my certif certification right now for uh, fitness training. Um, just because I know I feel better when I exercise and when I eat better and I detox. So why not help other people? That's how I see it. So listen, parents, do you have to sacrifice your dreams when you work with a creator who no. has dreams? No. no. That's no. one reason I want you to say that, Jennifer. So they, yes, yeah, I still do my own, and she knows, I still do my own thing, you know, life coaching and whatever I do, you know, I, but I just have to find a way to make it work for both of us, and it's some, sometimes it comes a time when I have to, you know, make a choice if we have certain things going on, but that's where your village comes in handy, you know, your yeah, family, yeah. your friends, Miss Marcy, you've been a great help. And you know I help anytime I, you listen. I know. Because I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want her to be with around anybody. That, and that's my thing. That's, yeah, so if that's I what I was going to say. Step in, I step in. <laughs> right. Having a trusted support group. Yes. And, um, you know, you've just been that one. I've never had any question or doubt. It was just like, nope. Yep. Miss Marcy. <laughs> Honey, you know, you know what it is. You yeah. know exactly what it is. And I love y'all dearly. We love you too. And we listen, you. Marley, before we end this segment, can you tell, thank you, Jennifer. Thank can, you. Can you tell some creator out there something to inspire them? Um, just be yourself and don't let anybody try to change you and try to make you something that you're not. If you love what you're doing and you're passionate about something that you want to do, go for it. Go for you know. it. <laughs> Don't let anybody try to tell you different. That's right. And there it is. Go for it. There yeah, are no limits it. when it comes to you being who you are and being a creator. Go for it. So the, the word here is, well, the two words. No, it's three <laughs> words. Three words. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Thank you, Marley, so much. Can you tell the audience now Thank how you. they can uh, keep up with you and on uh, social media and what you're doing. So my Instagram is Miss Marley TT, and yeah, you can just oh, and Marley Taylor on Facebook. Yeah, Marley Taylor on Facebook. And as I say every week out there, feel free to contact me at IntegrativeArtsCreations.com integrative arts at att.net email go on facebook it's integrative arts creations twitter arts integrate instagram integrative arts creations whichever platform you want to use reach out and say hey i want to tell a little bit about what i do as a creator because remember we're all creators you just have to tap into it everybody is still moving in their creativity nobody has reached the plateau yet so it doesn't matter how large or how small you think it is it is important and you can talk about it here on the connecting point all right marley thank you again sweetie p you know i love you i love, love you me too I thank you nothing you can do about it <laughs> <laughs> bye everyone so we see Bye. Bye.